Hey guys, it's Dane at Jonah Guitars, and uh, I got a brand new build series uh, I'm gonna start uploading. Uh, it's about this guy right here, the Gecko, and uh, all of the uh, the whole process of building will be uh, covered. It's a, it's gonna be a very complete uh, series. So I hope you join me, and uh, we'll see you there. Welcome back, guitar freaks. Um, so let me give you a little update. The last, I just reviewed the last segment and um, I'm trying to hit all the high spots. So we were doing grain fill. I was wiping it all off real clean. Uh, I, I went ahead and sanded it. I thought I would just try uh, the Scotch, the 3M. Uh, this is 3O, uh, 3 uh synthetic sandpaper or Stovall, excuse me. And uh, it did, it got some of it off, but uh, not, not, there are areas that it was a little uh, smeared on there and it didn't, it wasn't coming off. So I, I, uh, I tried actually a new 320 and for some reason it was gumming up and I had this old piece, this old difference like an open cut uh, 320 that was just a used piece in my folder. And I did the whole thing with that and it seemed to work out pretty well. Uh, I was talking about wet sanding possibly and the more I thought about it, you know, I don't, I don't just do this one thing after that because I got like jobs and other things going on so um gave me time to think about it and I well I don't want to wet sand the thing because it's a water-based filler um and drywall compound isn't a water-based filler that will dry and harden and not be affected by water it will it will get soft again so if you put enough water on it anyway so I uh I went ahead and uh, dry sanded it with the 320 open open coat uh, paper there and that worked out pretty good uh, and then I decided that because uh, it might be a little finicky with more moisture on it before I did a, the uh, second go around I decided to go ahead and uh, shoot some shellac on it again so that's where it's at I have I have uh, done another another round of shellac it's a sealer it's really thin um, but it's really it's really got, it's still got a lot of, a lot of pores. It doesn't look that much different than the very first time as far as that goes. So, um, I really do like the gray or the dark, it's kind of gray. I want to darken it up a little bit. And I, I am going to have to assume that there are some pores that, uh, that got filled and that will remain gray uh, even when I add some more filler uh, if I decide I've been thinking about adding some more red to the filler um, and I may do that or I may just use some more black uh, I'll figure that out here in just a second uh, I know it doesn't seem like I ever know what I really want to do until I do it yeah it keeps it exciting that way right I'm gonna tape off the maple stripe on the back just so I don't have to uh, uh, wipe filler off of that um, there was a little spot right on the very the very top here that for some reason picked up a little bit of filler and I do not want that in the maple so I sanded it back out and so I'll tape it off um, maples typically so fine that you don't have to worry about that sort of thing so uh, so closed grain um, what was the other thing I was thinking oh somewhere in the middle of whatever I was doing I don't even remember what tool it was I know it wasn't a chisel I don't know what it was but I was doing something and I dropped it and it landed right on the top, this top edge. And so in the middle of all this I got my uh, I got my uh, soldering iron out and steamed a dent out <laughs> the thing. Just, uh, just goes to show you. And looking at it now it looks like it's catching a little light there so it may still have a little bit of a dent in it. That'll get filled up with filler. Um, so anyway that's what we're going to do. I'll bring you back in here in a second. I'm going to get the, uh, the filler out and try to darken it up a little bit. Oh, what I had intended to say about the filler is that it really, there's some really wild, uh, and you, you'll never be able to see it here, but it really wild grain going different directions uh, across the top, and that filler really 
uh, accents that. So uh, if it were filler that were the same color as the wood, you wouldn't you wouldn't see that. So it's kind of cool uh, to change your color and get a little more detail that way. And the uh, the mahogany uh, there again. I'm not sure if you can see it, but it just looks awesome with the uh, darker filler in the grain. I'm really happy with that. So, all right, I'll bring you back in a second here. All right, so uh, here we go. Got about a half a jar of this stuff. And I'm actually just debating. I don't think I'm going to need all that. But I don't want to start from scratch either, so I'll just go ahead and add some some more uh, color to this and stir it up. Um, oh, I got one. I ran out of nitrile gloves. I got one glove on. Feel like I'm back in my Michael Jackson cover band days. Picture that. Um, All right, let's do some more magenta. Uh, while I'm stirring this up, let's uh, let's talk about um, how much I'm going to rub off this time. I'm not pretty sure. I'm not going to rub off. I'm not going to try to clean it up as good as I did last time. Somewhere in between perfectly clean and a pretty good film. I don't necessarily want to just leave it caked on there. Although being drywall mud, it should sand off relatively easy. Um, it, it wasn't bad, I do have to say, it wasn't bad sanding. Uh, not like previous times when I've sanded epoxy and or uh, one of the really fun ones was uh, uh, fun being sarcastic. One of the really uh, tedious ones was the end grain. You know, you you make end grain dust out of out of your wood, and then you pour out of a darker wood if you want contrasting, and then you uh, you basically you shellac it in, or you could, I suppose, use any sort of uh, sealer that would just anchor it into the so you could do it with something like uh, true oil or uh, you know wipe on poly of some sort some sort of thing Watco uh, Danish oil you know that sort of thing I think I might have been using I think I was using teak oil when I tried that but what happens is uh, uh, and maybe it's just my technique but it got all Boogered up on the uh, on the surface, and it was it was tough sanding that stuff back down to the to the guitar, and making it look clean. Um, I'm seeing kind of a weird pink hue to that now. I'll put another goober of that in there. And I'm going to uh, go ahead and put some black in this as well. Close the uh, magenta up. What I needed last time was popsicle sticks, and my wife had some hidden away in her craft. Uh oh, I don't want to get junk on there yet. In her little hobby closet. So I got I scored pretty good. She's gonna pick me up a package the next time she goes out of town to some place like Michael's. Okay. So uh, the other thing I'm gonna do when I'm applying this is work in smaller areas and work in uh, work it until it's pretty dry, so that uh, um, it just pushes down. I mean, it'll go into the pores when it's wet and kind of just try to smear it around until it's drier and then move on to another section. 
because you know even though this doesn't sand bad I don't want to do this another time past this <laughs> I'd really like this just to get in there and be done with and if I thought maybe just one one pass leaving more on the body and sanding back down to the surface would would give it to me in one uh, one shot I would I would just sand a little more but yeah that's still going to dry I think a little gray but it's got some red red background to it now all right we're back in here um, so I as you can see I went ahead and masked the uh, the maple and I'm uh, I just cut up a piece of t-shirt instead of uh, paper towel and uh, I am pre moistening it I also taped the uh, the inside of the cavities just so that when I do the other side I don't have stuff falling through and filling up the or not filling up falling through and getting on the towel uh, I'll go ahead and start on the back just for kicks and giggles and see what happens like I said I'm going to try to leave a film on here and uh, not pull it right back out of the grain I might just have to leave it on there pretty heavy I'm not sure that, like I said I've tried all kinds of different things with filling grain I've done it several times a lot of times over the years but uh, typically if I was going to do a paint type instrument uh, guitar I would uh, I would use poplar for the body or alders stuff that doesn't really need to be grain filled uh, the, uh, the lacquer the, the vinyl sanding sealer and the lacquer fills what little bit of grain there is on those woods up quite nicely there was a bigger defect for whatever reason you could cover it up with regular wood filler um, so that's uh, and that's actually because of the some of the experiences I've had with trying to fill up mahogany or coarser woods like well, Blood Mahogany and uh, Paduke. Uh, Paduke is a booger. Wenge just has tremendously huge uh, pores. And I've done, I've wrestled with some of those guitars for actually quite a while getting the grain. This was with the other types of fillers. And uh, it may just be that those particular instruments are, or wood species are real boogers to, to fill. But, uh, I uh, ended up oiling a couple of those and I like the natural look and uh, uh, the oiled look um, I use true oil and teak oil and things like that I like that look but I uh, just just looking at the top of this thing uh, and I had the uh, blood mahogany uh, that was the last uh, Nighthawk shape that I did that guitar uh, I had it in lacquer and it just looked amazing but I had a, uh, a fisheye uh, something uh, the back turned out pretty good turned out amazing actually in lacquer and it buffed out and it was just stunning and it just didn't have the same effect um, with uh, with the oil it looks good it looks really good but it does not have the same effect that it had when it was uh, glossy uh, lacquer anyway that guitar uh, sold so the owner liked what it how it turned out that's the important thing I didn't build it you know, for the owner, I built it as a spec. I think I'm going to just leave this stuff on here a little heavier, 
so that uh, I sand it back down to the shellac and leave that leave that filler in there. It's still not terribly heavy. And if it looks halfway decent when I sand it off, I will just start shooting coats of lacquer on it. And if I see it's sinking, you know, hopefully I won't have a bunch of it, but I'll spot fill where I need to, if that's the case. And I'm being a little more careful this time around. As you can see, I'm just doing sections with the rag instead of, uh, using that drywall spatula because I, I pulled it into all these cavities and down into this this hole here and it uh, it was a mess getting all that stuff out kind of a pain be the nicest way to say it But this is a trial again, you know, if this works out and sanding, sanding this, um, this excess off is the secret, then uh, that's great. I don't mind. Um, I will not mind that rather than having to do multiple fills. So this is the method um, that I'm going to be using. And you can see that even in areas I've overlapped, it's a little heavier. Um, I, can, I can go back there and take out a little bit, but I, I really don't want to pull it back out of the grain. I'm, like I said, I mean, this is only my second go around here, and uh, it always takes at least a couple. Uh, it doesn't matter what you're using. But um, I guess I'm just basically lazy. I don't want to have to do this over and over again. Finishing process is by far, for me, the uh, most uh, involved, tedious, what, whatever the word should be. Um, uh, just, it's, it's no fun at all. I mean, I, it's kind of a thrill when you shoot you know, sealer on, you can see that grain pop. Uh, that's pretty exciting, but um, it's a long way once you start getting back to to that, and you get um, you know eight or ten coats of lacquer on this thing, and then um, you you know you sand it all down to where it doesn't shine at all, and you got to buff it all back. It's everything, every part of this is kind of a Kind of a drag. It's the nice, nicest part about doing repairs is that it's you know typically you're only dealing with one little section. I did do a uh, a complete restoration slash refin on an old uh, about a seventy um, guild Starfire base. That guitar had so many holes in it. That um, it was, it was some filling holes and all that, and then still doing a uh, transparent stain on it, so the holes had to be filled to where uh, you couldn't really tell that there'd been holes there. And um, so, but that that refinish was a bugger, and that is why I now tell people I don't do refinishes. There's no way. I could uh, I could charge enough by the hour. I mean, I could, but nobody would pay it. Um, and there's no way to know when you start something like that how many hours you're going to have into it. The guy that I was working for was pretty good about that, but 
Um, even so, I think it cost more than he was anticipating. And I had no way of knowing what it was going to end up costing. But it was a beautiful base. In fact, it's on YouTube. One of these, uh, it's a Starfire base on YouTube. It's a real, I think it's a pretty short video. I don't think it's a series. So uh, you can see that. Go back and look that up. Uh, if I think about it when I'm running through this, maybe I'll put a link to it. Okay, uh, you guys obviously get the idea. It's just slow going, kind of a pain. Bring you back when I'm uh, probably sanding this off in a couple days. Um, it should be dry tomorrow, but when I started sanding it after it had been sitting here a couple days, it seemed like the shellac was balling up a little bit with the new 320. So I'll have to find out if I got some more of that open coat stuff. Or just go to a little bit higher grit, but I think the next one is going to be T20 or T50. That's a pretty good jump. All right. Um, yeah, there you go. I'm going to turn you guys off, turn the radio on, and have some fun. See ya. Well, all right. Um, I did the... Um, Second go around with the filler, left it on heavier as you can see. Um, you're probably going to see this right after the last bit, so you just you already just saw that. And uh, and I went ahead uh, before I did the filler, I went ahead and shot shellac on that. Uh, I was debating just taking a quick try to uh, uh, just you know take a damp uh, paper towel and wipe some of this off, but this is sanding off of here so fast that uh, I'm not even going to worry about that. I'm not even going to try. So just to show you now, I've already, and this was a fresh piece of paper when I started, and uh, just to the other side there, but just to give you an idea. Uh, how, how quick this goes, actually. This is one of those things, kind of like sanding on the uh, on the disc wheel when you're making templates. Um, if you're not careful, you might just take too much off. And this paper's uh, gumming up a little bit. And once you get it down to the point to where you can see what you got and just kind of concentrate in those areas. I'm going to go over the entire guitar, getting it down kind of like pretty clean. Uh, I'm definitely going to take it down more than that just to make sure that I don't have any kind of haze on it. And uh, so just kind of concentrate in areas that have, you know, the filler. Um, still stuck on it. Uh, if you've ever sanded any of the other sorts of stuff out, well, I, I'm thinking probably specifically the epoxy. The epoxy is just really difficult to sand, uh, in my opinion. I'd, I'd love to hear if anybody's had, you know, more positive results um, with with their epoxy filler um, than I did. So if you've you want to chime in, feel free. Um, okay, I'm going to change paper. Actually, I threw that piece out, but I think I'm going to retrieve it. Not that it's a huge deal, but when I get down into areas like this, there's no point in using a brand new piece to do that. Oh well, I'm gonna 
I'll flip that over. Oh, I got, a, got this piece right here. I just I just picked this paper up today at work, so um, it says it's it's designed primarily for uh, let me get the package sanding sanding painted surfaces, whether latex, oil based, or lacquer. So uh, it's it's less likely to bind to plug up because I had a piece. I started this the other day with uh, with some other 320. This, uh, by the way, I didn't know if I mentioned this, this is 320. But uh, I started this the other day with some 320, and it just seemed to plug up instantly on the paper. And uh, so I, I mentioned that either I had some um, I had I had some an old you know used piece of uh, of an open coat kind of a paper. More like uh, what you might get from 3M, the gold stick it paper that uh, that you get from Stumac. Although this wasn't that exact product. Okay, so this is all down close enough that I'm I'm going to leave that. Now, if I had an open coat that was a finer grit, I would uh, I would I would employ that at this point. But I'll just have to be careful, or I'll use some of the um, the uh, more worn out pieces as I go. I want to flip this over though and do the face here. And uh, as I usually end up telling you, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna bore you and sand this entire guitar. I just want you to see how how quickly this is this is doing the job. So I mentioned uh, the last segment that if if this sanded off nicely and um, you know produced a, a pretty good fill by leaving it on a little extra heavy like it is here that I would definitely be going this route uh, you know I would just start from the very beginning and do just leave it on really heavy but until I reshoot this I won't really be able to tell how much uh, you know how much is in the pores how much really stayed in the pores so um, that's the plan and uh, I might, I might do a little test with lacquer, and see if um, the lacquer reacts to the fill. Um, I, I probably will just to find out, because I could very easily just shoot it again with the shellac, just to make sure that I've sealed the the filler in, and then start with the uh, the lacquer, because uh, no, there's not supposed to be any reaction between uh, shellac and lacquer. I know there isn't any relax. Uh, reaction between shellac and lacquer. Um, but I will not just shoot lacquer straight on this because of the filler and uh, I want to make sure that so I'll either shoot shellac on it I guess that's the long way around saying that. I'm either going to shoot shellac or do a test with lacquer before I shoot lacquer on it. And um, find out what happens. Um, I'm, I'm not in a huge hurry and it would be a good a good thing to know if the, if the lacquer is going to react with uh, with this filler. Uh, it wouldn't probably wouldn't react, react with just the um, the drywall mud itself. I don't know that there's anything in there chemically that would react to, uh, to lacquer. But I, um, I don't know about the colorant. And there's a significant amount of it in the filler. So,
That looks pretty clean. But it definitely looks uh, duller than, uh, I don't know if it's grayer. So I don't know if it just retained a lot more filler this time. Looks like it, anyway. All right, um, I am going to carry on and I'll let you see how it turns out. And uh, if I do a test, tell you what, I'm not even going to say if I do a test. I'm going to do a test and I'll show you how that worked out as well. And I'll, I'll do the same. Uh, well, I'm not going to pre-seal it. I'll do the same thing though. I'll, I'll get a piece of mahogany and uh, I'll throw some filler in it and let it dry and sand it back and shoot it with lacquer and see what happens. And I will bring you back in as stuff progresses.